Welcome to Joshua's Tech Tips. In this video, I'm going to be doing a complete Unify setup. This is a particular setup that I use at home. So the devices that we are working with is a USG3 firewall, 8 port PoE switch, which would power our cloud key as well as access point, cloud key gen 1, as well as a nano HD wireless access point and a laptop for configuring the system. So just to give you an idea how the system is connected, I have my internet connection that I have for my ISP, which is Digicel. Right, so I have a network cable for my Digicel modem going to the one one port of my USG firewall. Next, I have another network cable coming from the LAN port of my firewall that's going to port one of my PoE switch. I also have a network cable from my wireless access point that goes to port 2 of the PoE switch. My laptop is also connected to the PoE switch. And last but not least, I have the cloud key which is also connected and receives power from the PoE switch. You'll also notice that there are white lights on the Unify devices. This is because they have not been adopted. Once they have been successfully adopted, the color of the lights would change from white to blue. Next up, let's start the configuration. So first up, let's bring up a command prompt. And type in ipconfig. This is to see if we have a valid IP address and can communicate on the network. So as you can see, we have a valid IPv4 address and our gateway, the 192.168.1.1, that's the IP address of our USG firewall. Next up, let's do a ping to 8.8.8.8. This is Google's public DNS servers. So as you can see, the ping request has been completed successfully. This would indicate that we have connectivity to the internet. So what I want to do next is I want to log in to my USG. You do this by typing in the 192.168.1.1 address in my web browser. You may get a request asking you if you would like to proceed. Please select yes. So we're now inside of our USG. This is our one internet settings. We're using a DHCP address that we have gotten from our ISP's modem. Right, this is our modem address. However, if you're using a static IP address, simply click on the configuration tab. And here you could change the connection type from DHCP to static. However, in my case and in most residential cases, you'll be using a DHCP address. So you could just leave it on DHCP. In most business and production environments, you may need to use a static IP address. So we're going to exit that and we're going to search for the Unify devices. You're going to type in UBNT Discovery. This is a Chrome extension that we'll be using to discover our Unify devices. I already have it installed in my browser, so I'm just going to select launch app. Once launched, I'm going to select Unify family. And here you see, it shows you a list of all my Unify devices. I have my Nano HD access point, my gateway, and my PoE switch. To find the cloud key, I simply click on find cloud key. And it now shows me my cloud key device. You notice all of them are in a pendant state, so we want to configure them by logging into our cloud key. Simply click on the IP address, select advance and proceed. We are now prompted with two options, to either manage our devices or to configure the cloud key. Select manage. I'm seeing that I have a firmware upgrade for my cloud key. 
So I'm gonna select upgrade. So give it a few minutes for the upgrade to be completed. So the firmware upgrade has been successfully completed. So now prompting me to name my controller. You could leave it as a default or you can change it. I'm gonna change mine to Vikings Home Network. And yes, if you're wondering, I am a fan of the Vikings TV series. So I'm gonna select next. Next up, you're going to enter your username and password for your Ubiquiti account. This is so you can access your cloud key remotely. So if you don't have a Ubiquiti account, you could go to this website, unify.ui.com. And here you'll be able to sign up for a Ubiquiti account. So once you're finished entering your credentials, click next. So the next options are asking if you'd like to automatically optimize your network and enable auto backup. So I recommend leaving these two tabs checked and selecting next. So here you could create a name for your Wi-Fi network. So this would basically be the SSID or the wireless signal that you'd be connecting to. So you know my affixation with Vikings, so I'm going to name mine Vikings and you're going to create a password for it as well. When finish, I'm going to select next. Here's a list of my Unify devices that need to be configured. So I'm going to select all these devices and I'm going to select next. So here we have a review of your current configuration. You notice that it automatically set up a Vikings IoT network. This would be for my smart things, my internet of things. They could use this signal to connect to. It'd be using the same password that you set up for your main network, your main wireless networks. So that's a pretty handy feature. So I'm just going to select and change my country which is Trinidad and Tobago and that's it for my current configuration. I'm just going to click finish. So we're going to want to give it a couple minutes to complete the configuration. So the configuration was successful and we are logged into our Unify dashboard. Here we have our internet connection, a firewall our PoE switch and our access point. So we have a bird's eye view of our network. We're going to go to the devices tab. And here you can see our devices again, the USG, the PoE switch and the access point. You could also select the list view and view them like this also. So as you can see this little icon above the switch indicates that it's in need of a firmware upgrade as well as the access point. So I normally recommend upgrading one device at a time. I prefer to start with the access point first and then the switch. So select the access point, select upgrade, confirm. And you're going to want to give the access point a couple minutes for the firmware to be upgraded. So now that the access point has finished upgrading, we're going to upgrade the switch. I'm going to click on upgrade, confirm, and you're going to give this a couple minutes as well to be upgraded. So now that my devices are up to date, I'm going to set aliases for them. This would make them easier to identify on my network. So I'm going to select the switch first. Configure tab, alias, and I'm going to name this US-8-150. You can name it whatever you like. I'm just use, using this name for this example. And I'm going to select save. Next, I'm going to set the alias for my access point. So I'm going to set this alias as Nano HD. I 
last but not least I'm gonna name my USG firewall I'm gonna set the alias as USG So I just want to walk you through an additional step of creating a guest network. So to do this, you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom on the settings tab. Here if you look at wireless networks, there we have the Vikings wireless network that we had initially set up. If you select networks, here we have our corporate default network and our WAN connection. So I just want to select edit and I just wanted to reserve a couple IP addresses on my main network. So I'm going to adjust the DHCP scope for the addresses to start at dot 20. So I'm going to reserve those first couple of addresses for if I have servers or any to my network, I could use those first couple addresses. That is completely optional, you don't necessarily have to do that. So I'm going to select create new network and this would be the network for our guest network. So I'm just going to name this um, and as you probably guessed it, um, not guest but Vikings guest. Alright and I'm going to select guest. Next, I'm going to set my VLAN ID to 200. I normally like to set it at the same number as the third octet in my IP range. So my IP range for this network would be 192.168.200.1. It makes it easier to, you know, remember. So I'm going to set it as a slash 24 network. So this would give me 253 available IP addresses which should be more than sufficient. Next I'm gonna set my DHCP range. Starting address will be 192.168.200.20. I'm gonna reserve those first couple of IP addresses just in case I want to implement something on my guest network as well such as a server or something like that. The ending address would be 254 and I'm going to leave everything else more or less as it is and I'm going to click save. So now that we have our guest network set up, we need to set up our user group. So we're going to select the user group tab, we're going to create a user group. So I'm going to set the name as Vikings guest for simplicity's sake. And you could see here you can set the actual bandwidth that you're allocating for the guest network. So I'm going to set the, the download as 10 megabits per second. And for the upload, I'm going to set this to 5 megabits per second. So this is obviously one of the main advantages with setting up a guest network is that you could restrict the amount of bandwidth that the guest uses. This way they won't necessarily use up all your bandwidth on your, your main network. So I'm going to click save. So the last piece of the puzzle, we're going to now select wireless networks. And here's where we would link everything together and the magic will happen. So we're going to select create new wireless network. And I'm going to set the SSID, as you guessed it, Vikings Guest. We're going to change the security to WPA Personal and here you're going to create a um, security key. Then you're going to select Apply Guest Policies. You're going to scroll all the way down and you're going to select use VLAN and you're going to enter the VLAN ID that you set. So it's 200 in my case. And for the user group, we're going to select the Vikings guest user group that we created a little earlier. Scroll all the way down 
and select save. And that's it, we have successfully set up our guest network. And if we go back to our Unify dashboard, we see everything is working great. Network performance is excellent right now. So but next up, we're gonna test the actual guest and the main network and see what speeds we're getting. Also, if you're interested in purchasing this equipment, this particular setup, I'm going to leave Amazon links in the video description so you could use those links to purchase this equipment. And I use this equipment um, at my home, you know, for my um, to run my Wi-Fi network. And I have video game consoles, computers, laptops, fire sticks, and I have absolutely no issues with the Unify setup. So I would highly recommend anyone looking for a good Wi-Fi setup to invest in this Unify system. So by, for my phone, I'm gonna connect to the guest network. So let me see if I'm getting the 10 megabits per second download speed that we had originally set on the guest network. So I'm gonna do my speed test. So as you can see, we are getting the expected upload and download speeds on the guest network. Next up, let's connect our main Wi-Fi network and see what speeds we're getting. I'm currently paying for 70 megabits per second up and down with my ISP. So I should be getting speeds similar to that since we have unlimited bandwidth set on the main Wi-Fi network. And as you can see, we are enjoying full speeds on the main Wi-Fi network. So that's all for this video. Remember, if you like the content I'm sharing, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.